The marijuana is not a separate thing. This, again, is a drug. Just like LSD is a drug, just like amphetamine is a drug, or just like barbiturate is a drug. There's a specific chemical in marijuana known as tetrahydrocannabinol, or let's call it THC from here on out for short, which is the uh, material, the chemical, that produces the high of marijuana. Dr. Burroughs pointed out that a good deal of the confusion concerning the effects of this drug is due to its very low concentration in American marijuana, or grass. Smoking typical pot usually produces mind-altering or hallucinogenic experiences, though sometimes it has little or no effect on some people. But as the drug becomes more concentrated, it has all of the effects of any of the hallucinogens. In high dosage, it parallels LSD. And already, more purified marijuana, hashish, and the synthesized THC itself are readily available. I think it becomes obvious after having categorized all these drugs, we've now talked about all these different categories, one thing keeps coming up all the time, and that is the drug-dependent, mind-changing or mind-altering effect of all of these drugs. The unfortunate person who gets started in this finds himself getting into an ever-increasing abyss, where he starts out with the idea, I'll have a kick or a high, and that'll do something for him. Well, uh, it's true, these things do have a kick, or obviously people wouldn't try them. But the trouble is, the person then gets involved in this vicious cycle. The kick becomes something that is not as good as he thought it was. He finds by using his drug that he has lost his capability to be responsible, He's lost his ability to be a worthwhile, uh, successful student or successful individual. So he starts to seek ways to help him. And the only way he can seek, since he's using the drug now to avoid the reality of his failures, is to take more drugs. And down and down he spins. And he spins into a situation where he is virtually buried alive in a chemical tomb. This is the problem of drug dependency. One of the most tragic things about all this, as far as teenagers are concerned, is what this does to the teenager. A teenager is a person who has finally grown up to the point that he can begin to struggle with making his own personal decisions. And he makes these decisions and finally learns how to do them. And when he has gone through this decision-making process, he suddenly turns from a teenager to a mature adult. One of the things that will stop it cold sooner than anything else is the taking of drugs. Because in taking the drugs, the person is doing exactly the opposite of what he's trying to do as a teenager. He is putting himself into a position where he cannot make decisions, where he is only irresponsible and incapable of doing this, and he is cutting his life off. But there are other reasons not to smoke marijuana or to take dangerous drugs. Possession of them is illegal. It is not, as many seem to believe today, an unenlightened law. Nearly every country in the world, including the United States, is a signatory to an international law banning the use, sale, cultivation, and possession of dangerous drugs that have no useful place in medicine, such as heroin and marijuana. Is the gamble of drug exploration worth this? Is it worth the physical and mental risk as well?